If you have your Bibles, would you turn to 2 Kings chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. I'm just going to read it off the screen, but 2 Kings chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahazi, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the sea royal. When this woman saw that what she wanted to happen wasn't going to happen, instead of getting behind what God wanted to happen, she said, if I can't have it my way, she thought she was a burger king. And said, if I can't have it my way, ain't nobody going to have it anyway. I'm going to kill everything God tries to do. Next verse. But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahazi, took Joash, the son of Ahazi, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. Notice on all the young people that were being slain by the enemy, there was somebody that got snatched up. In the middle of all the obscurity and all the pain and all the struggle, God had his hand on somebody. Young people, middle-aged people, grandma and grandpa, I want you to know, if you're in here tonight, it's because God Almighty has kept his hand on you. I hear a crazy. See, the stuff that killed them, they, that drug you, they should have killed you. That overdose should have taken you out. But God said, I got my hand on this one. The Bible said it stolen from him the king's sons which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. Verse 3. And he was with her hid in the house. Notice he was hid somewhere in the house. Hidden in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. Last verse, I'll read verse 4. And the seventh year Jehoiada sent and fetched from the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them. And he took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. Will you put up verse 3 for me one more time, Spunky? I just want them to see this because this is what God is saying to you tonight. And this is what God has brought us all here tonight. No matter what your age bracket no matter if you're a parent, a grandparent, a teenager, a preteen, if you're listening to the words coming out of my mouth, it's God wants to speak this to you tonight. And he was hid in the house of the Lord. I want to preach a little while tonight from the subject of hidden in the house. Because I believe as I preach to you tonight, there are young people that God has hidden you in this house. I believe that some of you, God has kept his hand on you and kept the enemy from destroying you and life from taking you out because there are things that God Almighty hid on the inside of you in your mama's womb. Even as I'm preaching to you, many of you have asked that question on the inside. How did I make it through what I made it through? I submit to you because God has hid you for a time such as this. The reason other people haven't seen anything special about you is if it would have been revealed too soon, they would have killed it. But God has hidden you for such a time. Hello, Esther. How did you give God a praise? Now, here's what's tricky about God. God puts his treasure in trash. And the reason the church misses the move of God is we always trash collect. We won't know how many times you've been married. How many times you've been locked up. How many times you smoked too much. How many people you've been with? How many, how many people have you wanted to be with? How many, how many, uh, what did you do last summer? We love trash. But God said, if we would quit trying to collect people's trash and begin to see past their trash and realize that in the side of every person, there is a treasure. That if you quit preaching on the trash and start preaching to that treasure, that's all I wish summer. If you say there's something on the inside of me, I'm going to give you some trash. I'm church. Because here's what church, some of the churches I grew up in did. They would beat you to death. If God didn't get you, they'd get you for him. <laughs> if they saw you smoking, if your hair was touching your collar, if you listened to the rock and roll and liked to holler, if God didn't smite you before they got to you, they'd smite you. And you feel so bad at their services because you're pretty sure you're just going to hell. So you go to that altar and say, God, I need your help. They see you praying and instead of them getting happy about you praying, they think you didn't mean it. So they, they want to see you cry because if you didn't cry, you didn't mean it. 
So they loved you enough to bash your head into the altar. Especially if they knew that you were trash. But you know what I found out about people? Is there's trash you can see and there's trash you can't see. You can see the trash in somebody's life that, that's been, you know, through stuff. But did you know you can have some stuff going on the inside of you and you can fake out the person sitting beside of you and you can fake out the preacher, but the enemy knows about your trash and you know about your trash and you're afraid to get rid of church because you have been around more trash collectors than you had, tra had treasure hunters. Can I tell you that this preacher, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, the reason I find him the way I find him is because I ain't worried about your trash. I'm worried about your treasure and I'll stand up against hell to fight for treasure and nobody will wreck this house because it's ain't your trash can and if you don't like it, get on out baby this ain't no trash can this ain't no gossip sin why do I roll like I roll because God did not call us to condemn people that's been through trash God called us to see past their trash and say there's a treasure on the inside of you me and Jake were riding up the road yesterday, or was it the day before yesterday? And I thought I saw a buzzer on the side road eating roadkill paint. And I hate watching something eat roadkill. I have a very sensitive stomach. So I'm like doing this, Brian. I'm doing this right here. I ain't going to see no buzzer at eating no roadkill. Jake goes, Dad, that's, that's a golden eagle. I said, boy, you're hallucinating. <laughs> And I got to looking, and there were grown men standing outside of their office, and they were watching this golden eagle jump right there between Midway and the top of Claypool Hill. A golden eagle was on the side of the road eating road. And I've always preached to you about how eagles don't eat like buzzards. Eagles are picky about what they eat. Jesus, the Word of God, compared us to eagles, and I begin to think, why would this eagle be acting like a buzzard? And eating filthy food. And then it came to me. The eagle got hungry. And the eagle's desperation caused it to do something that it wouldn't normally do. And that's why me and grown men were standing outside of the place of business faith and looking at this eagle acting in a way it shouldn't be acting. Because they knew eagles don't eat trash. And see, you are an eagle in the house of God. But if you get hungry and you get desperate, you'll settle for something far less than what God has for you. So instead of eating roadkill, you ought to say, God, I want manna from heaven tonight. I need a word from God. I don't want gossip. I don't want trash. I don't want junk. I need a word. I don't come to church for trash. There's enough trash in the world. I don't come to church to fight. There's enough fighting in the world. If I come to the house of God, it's because I know that everybody gets hungry. And I know what it's like to sit up for roadkill. Makes you sick. Contaminates you. I don't get any pleasure in talking about people's trash and digging up people's past. I believe it is the job of the church. Help me, church. I got trash getting y'all got it holy. I rebuke you, Satan. Roll the stone away. It is the job of the church to take the lid off and dig into the trash and say there's a treasure in that drug addict. There's a treasure in that person that's found. There's a treasure in that prisoner. There's a treasure in that broken guy. There's a treasure on the inside of you. And if you let God speak tonight, he will resurrect. Let's see, God wants us preoccupied with the trash. People want us preoccupied with the trash. Did you know that a lion will stock out a flock or a herd of gazelle? And it realizes it can't catch a gazelle, especially a strong male gazelle that can run like chase or cat. So you know what that lion does? Is it looks through the flock or the herd and it tries to find one that's pregnant. And it begins to stalk that lion above every day. It, that mind begins to stalk that gazelle every day because it realizes that at one point, if it's carrying something on the inside, there's going to come a moment that it's vulnerable. And in its vulnerability, the line is waiting to strike. That's why pregnant gazelles like to get in the middle of the flock, in the middle of the herd, so they can't be spotted out. But if the line spots one that's carrying something, it'll stop them day after day. Some of you say, why does the devil been after me like he's been after me? It's because there's something on Somebody, if you've been fighting hell, if you've been crying tears, if you've been going through 
is fighting you is because he sees the pregnancy, Chuck. He sees what's in you, John. That's why it comes. The enemy don't mess with the family. The enemy messes with people that are carrying purpose. Now I got to tell people on the sound of my voice today that the devil didn't wait till you got saved to start messing with you. Jenny pastor some people today that the enemy didn't wait till you started the serve of God to mess with you. But the enemy says you were pregnant at a young age. He tried to send people into your life to break your spirit. He tried to send people around you to try to crush you on the inside. And see, the gazelles, they ain't got enough sense to hide their young. The problem with the church is they ain't got no sense at all. We see people that are pregnant with the purpose of God. And instead of us breaking on men, we ought to have been standing to our feet and praising God when these teenagers were up here. They ain't that school to crack. They're not putting them in the way They're not a lot of But the church has been notorious for not recognizing somebody that's pregnant for purpose because we can't get past the package that it comes in. And we've got people in this hour that don't understand that when God's going to do something in your life, you pray for the oak tree. But God sends you an acorn. God always starts in seed form. And it takes spiritual people to see that inside that seed is the oak tree. Every good thing you've got in your life that started with the seed. I'm going to prove it. My best friend, sitting on the front row, sitting up here, Bobby, I just want to marry you one more time. <laughs> Let me tell you how our buddy friendship started uh, 30 some years ago. Football practice. He walks up to me. He goes, You think you're cool, don't you? <laughs> and somehow God took that seed of that knothead. And gave me a lifetime friend. I didn't walk up to Bobby and say, Behold thy friend that shall walk with thee through the fire. No, our first conversation, I'm going to backhand him. <laughs> but in that scene, God said, I'm going to work that thing. And now I've got a lifetime friend because of that. See, you got to learn how to recognize God in the scene. I can't go up here. See, I, I wanted to do it right. But God didn't send me. Uh, a wife. I was at Myrtle Beach with my shirt off. I know y'all pray for me. 18 years of age. I was not no 19 years of age. And when I saw all this blonde headed girl walking up to some other recently girls, I started flexing. <laughs> right there. You, you guys know y'all do it. J Bo was doing it tonight. He was trying to outflex some cheeseburgers. <laughs> so I started flexing. And in that, and she kind of gave me the Bobby Atkins look. She kind of gave me the you think you're cool, don't you? I don't know what it is with that. But all I know is we've been married 21 years, have two kids, and we've seen God always bring us through. But when God starts in the sea, if you'll see the potential in the sea, God will give you the harvest. God, we're missing it. Because we're praying, God, give me the tree, give me the tree. And God hands you a seed. We're praying, God, give me friends. And God gives you the opportunity to talk to people, and you don't. The Bible says to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. If you want to sow a seed. And what you sow and see, the, the, the tree, all the tree will ever be is inside of the seed. The, the only thing the seed needs is the right atmosphere for that to be brought out of it. See, God had all that seed inside of Cody, but he wanted the right atmosphere for it to come in. The reason Jabo is where he is is Jabo never wanted the pulpit. Jabo wanted the presence of God. I don't promote people that want pulpit. I promote people that want presence. Because if they want the presence, they can help somebody. Is there anybody that hears what I'm saying? There's a generation that says, leave me into his presence. Lead me into the presence of this God you say can calm the troubled mind. This God that you say can touch my fears. This God that you say can forgive my sins. I don't need you to impress me, preacher. I need you to lead me into his presence. And God saw the heart of Jacob and Heather and said, he ain't worried about the pulpit. He wants to lead them into the presence of God. 
The time of our text, the Bible said there was an evil woman ruling over the people of God. And when she saw that what she wanted to happen wouldn't happen, she said, I'll mess up everything. It reminds me of a lot of church folk. That when it don't happen the way they want it to happen, and God says, no, I'm going to do it another way. Instead of getting behind it, they, they, they buck up on it. Let me tell you why we, one of the reasons God started sitting on the hill is because I was looking for a people, and God was looking for a people that if you got up with trash cans and started banging on them, they'd say, thank God, that's cool. And we wouldn't sit back there and judge and say, well, I've never seen that before. Hey, I thank God for a city set on that hill. That's what it ain't got to be my way. It's got to roll in on it. I'll get behind it. You bless us and we celebrate. I worry about people that can't celebrate the gifts in other people. When Saul got anointed in Romans and in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, the Bible said it was his own family, those of them that refused to give gifts to him at the celebration. See, some of you are surrounded with people that refuse to celebrate you. They won't even tolerate you. They refuse to get happy anytime God blesses you because they can't get over who you used to be. And they can't get over what you used to do. You can never blossom hanging around the tolerators. You better find you somebody that knows how to celebrate the thing God's doing in. You know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to go home and me and Carlina are going to celebrate that we saw young people up at this altar giving God a praise. That God is raising up to me and raising up to and raising up an altar. Y'all think I'm hyper, but I'm hyper. <laughs> I think the problem is so many times we allow young people to get excited about everything but the house. And we wonder why they don't want to come to church. And we wonder why they get more excited about doing the bad than doing the good. It's because we've given them a form of godliness that gives them nothing to get excited about in the house. Can I tell you, there's way more to be excited about in here than there will ever be out there. Somebody give them a hand clap. The Bible says that Adelaide saw that her son, what she wanted to rule, was not going to rule. She began to kill the seed. The Bible called it the seed royal. See, when the enemy launches against Marcus. He doesn't fight Marcus over where Marcus is. He fights Marcus over the seed. That's it. When the enemy begins to launch to attack at John, it's not about where John is. It's he sees that seed of leadership, that blessing that he has. And the enemy fights you, Chase and Cain, and that has nothing to do with where you are, where you've been. It has everything to do with the man of God he sees that you're going to grow into. And the enemy didn't start fighting Barry Asher when I grabbed the mic and said, I'll preach. No, he came to me at an early age. I got my brother here with me. I got my family here with me. The enemy fights things in seed form. Because if he can kill it in seed form, he can't, he can't stop him. That's why the enemy tried to kill Joseph as a baby. That's why the enemy tried to kill Moses as a baby. That's why the enemy tried to kill Jesus as a baby. The pattern is he always tries to kill you before you get there. Because he knows that if you ever get to the place where you know who you are in God, he can't do nothing with you. I said, we're going to kill them all. Somebody said, kill them all. Kill them all. But right where she was killing purpose and killing sin, there was a woman by the name of Jehoshua, which means the oath of the covenant. She snatched up one of the children and she hid it in the house. See, there's a generation that I know we've got, we've got teachers and we have college professors and we have all kinds of ideas of thought that are trying to tell you you came from a monkey and that God's not real and it doesn't change anything to pray to God and coming to church is just an old archaic way of thinking and there's some people that are buying into that lie but can I submit to you the majority or not? There is still a people that on the inside of them they know there is a God in heaven that can hear them when they pray and if CNN wants to focus you on the bad and Fox News wants to focus you on the bad but I wish to God they'd get a camera in here because we've got black people and white people and there ain't no color in here we're all in the blood of Jesus Jesus didn't come for skin Jesus came to save from sin that it was not in the white house that it was in God's house 
know what to do. George Bush don't know what to do. Some of you said, you know Donald Trump don't know what to do. <laughs> Neither does Hillary. Jesus does. Amen. Jesus can bring people together. This nation needs a move of God. Amen. Because the Democrats ain't got it, and the Republicans ain't got it. Amen. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you can't vote him out, you can't sit him down. He is high and lifted up, and he's saying to my people, who shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And he was hidden, not in the living room, not in the restroom, not in the foyer or the parlor. But this baby was hidden in the bedroom, which always speaks of intimacy. And in this bedroom, his nurse babe was with him and she fed him. And she would rehearse the promises of God to him. He wasn't saved one day and leave the nation out of bondage the next. There is a process to the plan God has over your life. You don't get saved one month and start preaching there by the next month. Say amen, somebody. Amen. In six years, he sat in the bed chamber, the place of intimacy. And his nursemaid told him, God has a plan for you. God kept his hand on you. You're, a, you're a, a son of the king. There's royal blood going through your veins. God kept you on the planet for a purpose. For six years in that place of intimacy, the nursemaid made him believe that he was who God said he was. And that he had what God said he had. And that he could do what God said he could do. See, that is a type of the church. My job is not to stir up your trash and beat you up over all the hell you've been through. My job is to tell you, you're alive for a reason. And God Almighty is not done with you. And you're a child of the King. And you can do said you can do. And you have what it says you have. And you can conquer. Is there anybody that believes you can ever find out who you are? We've got so many churches that are more committed to the trash can than the treasure. What sound are you listening to? The sound of the trash can or the stirring of the treasure that is within you? Reason many churches that, that have you ever went to church and you felt worse after you went than you did before you it's like Lord if I won't give up that bad I just went to the bar and brand shop. <laughs> tell you why they were leasing the trash can say Well you done this you wanna do that Ah oh, you like too much chocolate You don't drink liquor well, you drink too much cookie cola. You don't drink cookie cola, but your daddy likes coffee. Everything bad. Everything bad. Everything bad. Everything bad. We wonder why the pews are empty. We wonder why people don't come. Because God don't anoint that racket. This generation is listening for a second. They're listening for a sound that comes not from the judgment of man, but it comes from the throne of God. And it speaks to that deep thing that God placed on the inside of them. And it says, I'm pulling you. Yes, you might have felt like a trash can. I love what Jenny said. I'm going to steal that. But I'm going to sanctify you because the Bible said this treasure is hidden in earthen vessels. And if you're ever going to get to somebody's treasure, you're going to have to look past their trash and say God has something on the inside of it. I'm preaching to somebody right now that guilt has about eaten you up. That shame has about afflicted you, that what people know about you has tormented you, about things you know about yourself have kept you up at night. There are people on the side of my voice that you have contemplated suicide even in this last season of your life and you wonder how you made it and the devil wants you to feel like you don't belong like you don't deserve to be here. But the reason God kept his hand on you is he wanted to get you to this atmosphere tonight to let you know that he ain't worried about your trash, he is worried about your treasure and if you let God, he'll pull you into a place that he'll raise you up because in the seventh year they raised up Joash because the devil said we got them all ain't no king's kids left 
but they didn't know about the one that was in the bedroom. And on the seventh year, which was the number of rain, just when after life, I thought she had it all on lockdown. And so we got one left. Jenny comes to the end. We got one left. And because he made it through what others didn't make it through, he gets to reign. And they said, behold, a king's son. Can I tell you what America's looking for in this hour? They're not looking for the strongest Democrat. They're not looking for the strongest Republican. They're looking for children of the king that can stand up in chaotic times and say, we have the answer. And it's the blood of Jesus. It's the word of God. And it's the people that join together arm and arm and hand in hand. And we protect our young people. And we protect our pregnant. And we protect the purpose on people's lives. And we're not collecting trash. But we're gathering treasure. Because my God is a master of taking people's trash. And turning it into his treasure. My God can reach into the trash can. And pull out a drug addict. And turn him into a preacher. He can reach into the trash can and pull out an alcohol.